fish on. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Just the beginning of an amazing day here. I know it's going to be good. I fished this uh, small river once before. It was absolutely epic. Best smallmouth bass fishery that I know. <laughs> and I'm back for a redo. Been on the water for five minutes. Already hooked into a nice little smallmouth bass. I'm using a pretty cool little fly today. Um, it's actually a carp fly originally, but um, every characteristic about this fly is, in my opinion, incredibly well suited to smallmouth. Um, it's the McTage's Chubby Chaser is the name of the fly, created by a uh, carp fisherman in Denver. Uh, cool guy, really, really, really into carp. But um, this fly has uh, a headstand pattern. Uh, dumbbell eyes and then it has one tungsten bead up in front of that so it's got like kind of a it's got three beads essentially and um, a piece of rabbit fur sticking out the back so this thing will actually kind of stand up with its tail swinging in the current bounce along the bottom uh, this particular one's in a rusty kind of crayfish color so that's kind of the idea for today sticking with a crayfish pattern uh, bouncing it along the bottom along little areas of current and rock and uh, if I want to I can kind of move it quickly like a little streamer almost uh, so between those two methods you know I think we're gonna get a lot of strikes today there he is nice set of boulders right in the middle in the deepest part here had that fly just set down for a good long while set the hook and here we go I'm using the uh, Tenkara Rodco Kita. This rod is incredibly mid-flex. It's quite soft and it just flexes all the way to the handle, all the way through. And um, it's really, really good at pinning fish, keeping hooks pinned in fish's mouths. You know, they, they make runs, they move left and right, back and forth. And this rod just has a nice habit of uh, flexing with them, always keeping consistent pressure on the fly, um, and it really helps keep them pinned. Oh, there was a bite right there. Last time I came here, I was fishing a Clouser minnow, which is kind of a, a more low profile, a deer hair fly, um, and it imitates bait, imitates prey, minnows, etc. And uh, I was kind of working much more aggressively and uh, I was getting a lot of smaller fish. Today, I think just focusing on uh, a little bigger fly, this crayfish imitation, a little slower presentation, seems like the average fish size has been a little bit bigger, which has been really nice. And not only that, but this Kita feels <laughs> totally ridiculous with a fish on the other end. I mean, this average creek size smallmouth feels <laughs> just incredible. You really, can't understand how good Tenkara rods in general can feel, and especially something that's so soft and mid-flex like this Kita. Um, it's, it's, it's really wild. It's really, really fun. We got another nice, nice little smallie on. Birds are singing. Such a different environment than my home in Colorado. Really, really nice to change things up. I think I could get pretty addicted to uh, warm water smallmouth fishing if I lived in the Midwest, that's for sure. This fish could be the nicest one yet. He's certainly fighting like it. I'm gonna tire him out just a bit more. 
I picked this rod today because it was going to feel the best with the average size fish in here. There definitely are some bigger fish in here, and if I get into one, uh, <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to have a match. That's for sure. It's going to be tough. Gorgeous. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely enjoying this fly choice. This presentation is a lot slower, more methodical. Instead of uh, whipping a stream around, getting lots of bites, missing lots of strikes, you know, that can be fun in one sense as well because the action is just constant. Um, but I'm liking this approach where I'm kind of more strategically casting my fly behind rocks, letting it sit, and it just kind of reminds me of, you know, fishing a uh, Senko or a trick worm or something like that for bass. And uh, I come from that, that's kind of my history. So I like this a lot and uh, I just love sensing that strike and setting that hook and just having, having that solid hook set. Um, so it's, it's a lot of fun for sure. Carp flies for smallmouth. You know, I'm sure I'm not the first guy to do that. I'm sure there's plenty of uh, dedicated smallmouth flies that have just some minor tweaks here and there that share a lot of similarities to this so-called carp fly. Um, but uh, that's what I've got tied up and uh, I can definitely highly recommend head standing carp flies for smallmouth. I'm gonna fish up to this fallen tree with a lot of patience, slowly and stealthily. Last time I came here, I caught an absolutely monstrous smallmouth tucked right in between the V of this tree. Who knows if he's still chilling in there or not, or if another one is. It's certainly some really, really good smallmouth habitat. Good place for a big smallmouth to be holding. Uh, so I'm just gonna work my way up slowly, make sure I don't spook anything. I'm uh, genuinely a little bit worried about hooking hooking a smallmouth the size that I have caught here on this rod, especially around these trees, but uh, we're going for it. Let's see what happens. Just casting and stepping. Two steps, one cast, rinse and repeat. I really don't want to uh, step on or near a bass that I have not casted to. Just had a little rise up there. Uh, it's certainly some fishy, fishy activity going on. Look to be a smallmouth, I would assume. Chasing some forage of some kind. There are some little chubs in this stream. It could have been one of those guys hitting something off the surface. They definitely do that, kind of like trout. Um, but it was pretty splashy. I I'm thinking it was a smallmouth.
Ooh, what do we got here? A little chub. <laughs> it's a big fly for you, dude. Oh, cool. Pretty cool. I want to say this is a horny head chub. Lots of common names for these guys. Looks to be a male in breeding colors, too. <laughs> Quite a cool little chub. Always love some multi-species action. I'm sure that uh, handsome fellow was probably guarding his nest. Pretty cool. Only caught a couple of those in my life. Oh man, really nice bass. Just tried to eat the fly. He's coming right towards me. Really, really nice fish. I don't know if you guys can see him. Oh God, an even bigger one's right behind him. Oh my gosh. Absolute beast, here it comes, here it comes, here it comes. Oh my God. Freaking ate it again. Nibbled at it. Saw his mouth go. Missed the hook set. Seriously nice fish. I lost track of him. I don't see him right now. It's, oh, here we go. Six, seven feet in front of me is one of them. I can't believe I missed both of those hook sets. It looks solid. It looked solid. I waited and everything. <laughs> Uh, pulled it right out of their mouths both times Dang it. Oh Here he is man. These are nice fish I'm tempted to kind of See if I can trigger a reaction strike. Oh He's following 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 eat it eat it. Oh my gosh Dropping it right by him come on Still here, circling around. Chances are getting slim, this guy's gonna bite again. The more I mess with him, the less likely we got here. My goodness, two really nice bass. Good pass here, good pass here. It's about to intercept him. Oh, right by him, right by him. I wonder if they have a bed. It's uh, it's early June, is that smallmouth nesting season? I really don't know. There we go. Not the big one we were looking for. Still feels dang good though. Oh, that big one's following him. <laughs> Small mouth are such jerks. Oh man. <laughs> the fish following this guy is at least, I'd say two and a half, three times the size. Cool to see at least. Cool to know that there's smallmouth of that caliber in this place. This is truly the best smallmouth fishery that I've ever fished. Between the scenery, numbers of fish, solitude, and uh, the potential for quality, it's pretty unparalleled. There we go. Really gorgeous patterns on that guy. Striking. God, I love smallmouth. There's a little guy. The creek was getting pretty stagnant upstream. So I uh, decided to turn around, start working my way back down. 
day is not even close to over yet. Got so much more water to hit and uh, actually got some incredible holes downstream of where I first started this morning. So lots more fishing to go. Uh, the bite has slowed just a little bit for sure. Um, but that hopefully that stagnant water had something to do with that. And uh, hopefully we can keep getting into some more fish here. <laughs> I cannot mention enough how many butterflies are here. It's a butterfly plague. If you happen to know what species of butterfly these are, leave me a comment. I'm uh, definitely curious. Been going outside, spending the time in nature pretty much my whole life, and uh, I have legit never seen as many butterflies as I've seen today. Ah, see that splashing again? Looks like uh, suckers. Maybe doing some some breeding stuff, but definitely saw some some fins kind of splashing around the rocks there. There's a there's a bass. Heck yes. Ooh, feels good. It's been a little slow for the last couple hours, but we just kept at it. Our pattern is still working. Mmm. Heck yeah. Such spunky little fish. If you force me, I'm gonna say smallmouth bass are my favorite fish every time. <laughs> yes, come here, my friend. Oh, not yet, not yet. I got a long line, it's a little tough. There we go. Nice chunky little fish. Cool, <laughs> right in the rapids, trout style. Oh, what do we got here? Oh, another uh, horny head chub, I believe. On second thought, maybe not a horny head chub. Really pretty patterns. The scales are absolutely gorgeous. Let me know if you know what this guy is. I'm so rusty out here. I'm out of my element. Who knows what we'll pull out next? That is why I love fishing in places like this just so absolutely much. Trout streams out west, man, they sure are beautiful and grand and scenic. And uh, if you don't fish them a lot, I uh, certainly see why they're kind of the crown jewels of the fly fishing worlds. But uh, to be able to come and explore a place like this, man, it just makes me feel like a kid again. There we go. Such a fun day today.
Ooh, there we go. Last fish of the day, guys. Got to go find camp. Man, it's been a heck of a good day out here. Absolutely epic. Freaking love this place. And our trip is just beginning. Day one of three. Smallmouth in the books. Tomorrow we're off to find some trout. Pretty dang cool. This guy uh, allows people to spend the night on his farm for a price, <laughs> but uh, really pretty little spot here. And uh, turns out it's right next to an awesome creek that I'm most likely gonna fish tomorrow. Freaking epic. not really doing anything special for camp tonight. I'm actually just gonna sleep in the car. Uh, I brought my hammock and I was hoping to set up between some trees, obviously, as hammocks are, but um, really, really big old trees on this property and uh, they're kind of too far apart. So in the car it is for me. Uh, so I don't really have anything to do. I think there's maybe 45 minutes to an hour before sunset. This gorgeous creek is uh, flowing literally 100 feet from my campsite. Um, so I am going to fish for the rest of the day and uh, see what I can find. I saw some trout rising, uh, so let's see if we can uh, get into some of these trout and uh, yeah, give it a shot. Just saw a rise there. Come on. Perfect, perfect, perfect. There he is. I knew that was gonna connect. Right where I saw him rise. Looks to be a nice brown. Wow. <laughs> Heck yeah. Dang. Didn't expect it to be this easy. Gosh, pretty fish too. Oh man. That looked to be even bigger than the one I just caught. Oh my gosh, I hope this is a sign of things to come for tomorrow. Apparently during surveys, they've uh, surveyed fish up to 30 inches in this little creek. <laughs> I think I would die if I hooked into a 30 inch brown trout. I don't think I could land it. I think I would just freak out. I'd mess something up for sure. Could you imagine? I've never even seen a fish. Well, I've seen a fish that big, but I've certainly never seen a trout that big in person. That would just be ridiculous. Oh my God. I'm trash. I'm just, I'm just trash. Just a trash fisherman out here. Catching dry fly eats on my jig streamer. I like to fight them for about 
0.2 seconds and then let them go. It's better for the fish that way. My God, I've eaten probably 20 bugs today. Like these little like black flies. Oh. <laughs> I'm not gonna complain. Nobody wants to listen to a video with me complaining, but uh, good God, I am bugged out right now. So I've got my sunglasses on because they're just crawling right into my eyeballs. It is rough, I'm telling you. Even all the dang butterflies this morning. I got out butterflied. <laughs> Can you believe it? It's just too many bugs. All right, now I'm gonna go back to trying to be zen. <sighs> just stop going in my eyeballs. This looks good. Come on, where are you at? There we go. Please stay on. Please stay on. Nice brown. Okay. We're doing better. <laughs> we got him on a little longer already. Yes siree. Come get in my net. Ah, oh, bugs in my eyes. <laughs> I'm so excited to sleep inside the car tonight. Ooh, nice fish. Feisty, feisty. All right, in you go. Come here, come here. Come on, stop doing that. Yes, there we go. Eating ramen all alone in the dark. That's the lifestyle of a famous YouTuber for you. But in all seriousness, I cannot complain. What a great day today. Just absolutely incredible. From start to finish, sunrise to sunset, worked hard. Caught a ton of fish, saw a lot of beautiful stuff. And uh, I think tomorrow, <laughs> I think tomorrow is gonna be good. Absolutely. Nice fish. Nice brown. Chilling on right under that rock. There we go. Heck of a way to start the day.
First fish on the board did not take long at all, 10 minutes or so. I already missed a few strikes. That's the first one that really connected. Really, really solid brown, beautifully patterned up. All the browns are wild in this stream. This creek is gonna be absolutely epic today. Another hit. I'm using a jig streamer today. It seems like I've been getting quite a bit of reaction strikes to it. Uh, kind of some short striking going on, but we're gonna stick with it. I really like a jig streamer to kind of patrol around these rocks, cast behind rocks, move it upstream, nip it downstream. Very versatile and uh, one of my favorite kind of attractor and general searching patterns. Fish on. Oh my God, holy crap. That fish just rocketed from the depths. Ah oh, man, I wish I could wish I would have connected to him. That was wild. I heard the fish in here could be a little finicky, but uh, so far that has absolutely not been the case. And man, every brown I've seen has been a really nice size. There we go. Dang, <sighs> got wrapped up under this log here. I tried to come upstream and pull him out from under, but that tension of the line, I think it is able to pop the streamer right out of his mouth. Close quarters, brown trout fishing. Man, they are just uh, craving that streamer this morning. Let's move on to the next hole. Heck yeah, nice fish. Non-stop action. Wow, <laughs> really nice brown. I'm using the uh, Tenkara Rodco Rocky this morning. Good for chucking heavier tungsten nymphs and uh, should be able to handle any size brown we find in here. Yeah, wow, freaking awesome fish. Holy crap. Well, that is just a quality, quality fish. Stunning markings. 14, 15 inches long, I'd say. Fought like crazy. Just absolutely beautiful. I just had to come out here this morning and uh, hit those same holes that we hit last night before bedtime, and it definitely paid off. Did a little bit better this morning than uh, yesterday evening, but uh, I'm all set with hitting these few favorite spots from scouting it out last night. Uh, let's head to a new zone on this creek and see what else it holds. This place does not scream trout to me, but uh, we obviously know they're in here. This creek is spring fed. I wouldn't call it a spring creek, um, but cold, clear spring water does feed this creek, but it's just, a, it's got some interesting topography. Sections of rapids interspersed with like pretty long, pretty stagnant, sandy sections. Muddy, really. Silty and muddy. Oh, there, ah! Oh. <laughs> Oh, damn. <laughs> the highs and lows of streamer fishing, huh? I approached this section from upstream, 
and I'm actually working my uh, jig streamer actually as a streamer. A lot of times I'll dead drift it from below the run, you know, cast it upstream and just kind of tight line it down. Oh my gosh. Come on, buddy. You can get it. Connect. Eat it. Oh. Oh my goodness. I think I, I think I hit him that time. He might not be coming back. But uh, yeah, anyways, we're fishing, fishing our streamer as an actual streamer today. But uh, that's, the, that's the pros and cons of streamer fishing, especially in a place with trout density like this. Man, it's like every other cast, you see a trout following your streamer, they'll hit it, they'll flash up on it, but uh, they're not connecting every time. That's for dang sure. When you do work a dead drift style, I think it gives the trout a little more chance to uh, actually eat the fly instead of just purely a reactionary strike. Cow patties all around. If only you could smell. It's nice. I grew up in upstate New York and uh, this section of Wisconsin reminds me of where I grew up like to a T. So I'm really, really feeling a lot of nice nostalgic vibes as I fish here. I always wish that I had been into fly fishing back when I lived in upstate New York. Lots of action in this riffle. No connection. We're gonna move downstream. Just another couple hundred feet. Got a, uh, another set of rapids down there. Let's go hit them. Let's see if we can work right along this ledge here where the current's at the fastest. Yep, we can. Dead drifted it too. It's, it's really just more effective than working a streamer like a streamer. Nice. Man, they fight so hard in here. We'll get back in along this ledge, see if any other trout are hanging out. It's a really defined feature. Wasn't surprised at all to get a bite there. There's another one. He came off the ledge though, and uh, he was kind of in the deepest part of the channel, right smack dab in the middle. Man, awesome water. My first time in the Driftless, it's, it's been amazing. Easily the best looking spot yet. I want to approach this from down below. It drops off massively right here. I'm gonna work the edge right between the fast water and the slow. I could see a big trout hanging in here. Nothing right off the bat. I'm letting my uh, streamer sink in this hole here. Completely slack. Let's work it back up a little bit. See if we can move any fish. Mm. I don't know. I thought, thought I felt something there. Maybe not. I'm shocked. Man, that's crazy. I thought there'd be a fish here for sure. I mean, there definitely are. Just gotta find them and catch them. 
And guess what I'm saying is I thought I already would have caught one. All right, well, that's that. Let's move on to the next hole. How cool is that? He was right where he was supposed to be in this beautiful pool. Look at this flower is up perched on a boulder across the way there. Kind of like this like cool, silty, blue aquamarine color. Birds singing in the forest. Cool breeze. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Might be the prettiest one yet, too. Jeez. Oh, yeah. There we go. Another nice brown. Well, I think it's about time that I kept moving along. There's thousands of miles of water here in the Driftless, and uh, today I got to explore a pretty special chunk of it. Wild brown trout with stunning coloration, decent size, and there was just so many cooperative fish today. Um, truly a day to remember. And I just absolutely loved the setting that I was able to catch these trout in. This wooded setting, flowers all around, everything so lush. Um, really a special creek today. It's early morning, day three. I've packed up camp. I'm heading out to another local river I am so excited to see what today holds. There's a school of browns chilling right, at, right in front of me here. I've made a few passes over them. I'm in an extremely skinny, extremely clear spring creek. It is going to be a tough day of fishing today. <laughs> I'm gonna have to be very stealthy, but just like that, we got our first fish on. All right. That was cool. That guy was hanging right underneath the uh, little rock ledge right there. Real subtle, slow hit. He kind of kind of nabbed it. It was right on the edge of the rock. 
he went back in, set the hook, and there he is. <laughs> this is a cool spot. Incredibly beautiful. All right, we're just gonna keep working up the run, little by little, stepping as slowly and stealthily as possible. I kind of have to fish from inside the stream with my feet wet just because of the um, vegetation all around. And I think, you know, that's definitely a concern that will spook these fish, but so far seems to be working pretty dang well. Slow and steady. Heck yes, it's a decent fish here. For such a small creek, got some nice browns in it. I'm using the Tenkara Rodco Kita 380 today and a pretty simple fly setup. I've just got um, maybe three feet of 5X tippet and a single size 18 black uh, woolly waltz worm attached to the base there. Wanted something subtle, wanted something pretty low profile, something that could enter the water quietly and stealthily. I'll definitely be tempted to throw a dry on a bit later. But for now, this uh, single tungsten nymph is getting the job done. The fish are in here. It's just a matter of presenting that fly to them without being seen. Yeah. Just took dropping it down a little deeper there. Oh my gosh, how fun is this? It's like a game of cat and mouse here. Oh, such pretty fish too. All right, number two out of this pool. Little guy this time, but I'll take it. I've never fished a creek quite like this before. I'm sure it looks like I'm catching fish after fish, but uh, there's some work that's going into these fish. They're, they're being earned, that's for sure. They're all gathered up in specific spots and uh, if you blow your chance, it's over. Yes. Nice solid eat there.
So I made a fly change. I had that size 18 all black waltz worm. And my idea with that was, you know, kind of trying to be stealthy. Um, but it was a little too small. And unfortunately I didn't have any uh, slightly larger waltz worms tied up. So I wanted to try a nymph that was a little larger, something that could get down a little quicker so I could kind of plumb the depths of these deeper pools. Um, because even though it is a small creek, there's quite a bit of volume of water moving through here. It's kind of deceptive. So I wanted something to get down quicker. Uh, so I, I put on a uh, size 14 rainbow warrior uh, with, a, with a little bit larger tungsten bead. And I just started casting around here and these fish were like almost, almost like reaction strike attacking my nymph. I, I just missed a couple of different hits, but this could be a good sign here. I think the Rainbow Warrior might actually work out pretty well. Time will tell, of course, but uh, initial signs are looking positive. Uh, so I'm getting I'm getting some looks, which is kind of weird. So they're kind of like coming up to the fly, looking at it, turning back down. These fish, unfortunately, are spooked. Um, they definitely saw me a little while ago and kind of got worked up, and they were kind of swimming all around quick. And um, that could that could definitely be part of the reason they're not eating. Um, but yeah. It's a fun day out here, really fun, really different style of fishing for me. I'm really enjoying these Spring Creek visuals, just like crystal clear water. And now that the sun has actually risen a little bit, um, it's difficult because the fish can see me easier. Um, so that's a downside, but on the positive side, like the water just looks so pretty, just crystal clear, sparkling in the sunlight. Uh, all the light waves just kind of bouncing around. It looks really, really, really pretty, and I am really enjoying it. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah! <laughs> the power of the Rainbow Warrior. No fish can resist. Even spooky wild browns in a crystal clear Spring Creek. <laughs> That's awesome. God, what a gorgeous pool. From trout to smallmouth, tiny spring creeks to rivers, the Driftless, teeming with wildlife, scenery, and perhaps just a touch too many bugs, was a real joy to fish. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.